Paul says, all who rely on observing the law are under a curse, for it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. So all who rely on the book, the works of the law are under that curse. They cannot be perfect, and the good news is that Jesus has made us free, so we don't need to be perfect anymore, because he was perfect in our place. Peter sums up that, that beautiful freedom in the words in 1 Peter chapter 1, for you know that it was not with perishable things similar to silver and gold that you were saved, but from your empty way of life handed down to you from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Or as you and I confess, Christ has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sin, death and the power of Satan, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and his innocent suffering and death, that I might be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. That's the freedom worth protecting at all cost. And it's a freedom worth dying for, if need be. For it is the freedom of Christ. Years ago, an elderly man was walking to the park on a bench outside the park. He saw a 12-year-old boy. The boy was sitting there with a bird cage, and in the cage was a sparrow, and the boy had a pointy stick, and he was poking that sparrow with a stick with a very cruel expression on his face. And the man walked up to him, and he said, Young man, how much do you want for that bird cage? And the boy said, Well, I want $10, nothing less. And the man said, Well, what are you going to do with that bird? And he said, I'm going to poke him with a stick, and then I'm going to take him home and feed him my cat. So the man got in his wallet and paid him $10, took the bird cage in the park, opened the cage, let the sparrow go, and crushed that wire cage between his hands. That bird was set free. And isn't that a little bit like what Jesus has done for us? Redeemed us from Satan and the curse of the law. He opened to us the way of salvation by grace alone from the Father, through faith alone in the Son. By Christ alone, we have salvation alone. And so, we have freedom in Christ. Why would we ever want to stray into legalism? and say, yes, I believe that I go to heaven by faith, but I must also do this and do that because I have to. Or why would we ever stray into licentiousness and say, yeah, I know Jesus died for my sins, but I can live any way I please because God must forgive me anywhere, anyway, and sacrifice my faith for my selfishness my pride and my sin. With the freedom that comes from the new life in the Spirit, God enables us and emboldens us and causes us to want to avoid that sinful life. Not that we don't sin. We do every day. But when we do, we recognize the sin. And when we see the sin approaching, we try to avoid it. And those things that cause us to sin, we get out of our life if possible because we know that the Lord who loves us and died for us and rose again that we might be with him in heaven has set us free from these things. And so, God willing, we don't fall willingly into these sins. But even as we do fall into sin, in our heart, the new man recognizes our sin and the stray from God that we have undergone, the, the, the separation from God that that sin creates. And immediately through the power of the Spirit working in the Word prompts our heart to repentance and the Lord is faithful and He draws us back and forgives our sins and we are His. And that is the life we lead as a Christian, always in that struggle, 
always feeling that tension, that beautiful tension that tells me we are with Christ, tells me I am with Christ, because when I feel that tension no more and I'm living my life in whatever way I choose, then I know that I have traded the truth of Christ for a lie. So I live in the freedom of the gospel knowing that Christ lives within me by the power of his word and that his spirit guides me in this life. I don't want to use the freedom I have in Christ to indulge my sinful nature or as Paul says, my sinful flesh. Here's what it says in our scripture. You, my brothers, were called to be free. Don't use your freedom to indulge your sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. And so I avoid those things that inflame my passions. Those things that, that flame my desires, my sinful desires to life, which always hurt me and hurt others around me. What happens in our lives when those are inflamed? When anger gets hold of us? When jealousy and spitefulness take over? What happens, dear Christian friends, when I let my godless life overshadow my godly new person? I'm in danger. And through Christ and his word, he calls me back. And that's why I stand up here day by day and you sit at home day by day in the meditations and the forward in Christ and why you hear the word of God read and preached and why you go to Bible study to drill deeper into that word because it's the word of God that brings life. And that life that it brings bears fruit. And this is the fruit that Paul says it has. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature, he says, are these. They're obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But because we are free in Christ, Attached to him like a branch to the vine. We are in the word and we bear fruit through the word. And here is what that fruit looks like for you and I who are in Christ. Who are in the word. But the fruit, the one fruit that all of us bear of the spirit is this. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires, have nailed it to the cross with Christ. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us follow the leader. For you and I have been called to be free. There isn't any better encouragement to be in the Word. At church, at home, wherever you go, to be in the Word. Not because you have to but in Christ because you want to be. That's where Christ is found. Why would we ever be tempted to think that we can gain a greater freedom, have greater fun 
by returning to the slavery of the law and the judgment that accompanies it. It was in love that you have been called to be free in Christ. It was in love that Christ attained our salvation. Live responsibly in the freedom that you have been called to live as disciples of Christ, enabled by the Spirit of God to walk the road of faith. Cherish what it means to be free in Christ. Guard your lives in the pure gospel of Christ. Be willing to defend that gospel, yes, even if it means to the point of death, if necessary. And out of love for others, be willing to help others find the word of life as well. Put the word in the other people's hands. Unleash the power of the word and let it do its work in their lives. A simple reading of a meditation once a day can turn a life around and bring repentance and the freedom that the gospel offers. The reason, dear Christians, is simply this, that in Christ you have been called to be free. Amen. Join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock with Bible study and Sunday school at 1030 or find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. <laughs>